Hey guys, it's Gwen. Two weeks ago, we put out our ice cream musical and a bunch of you asked how in the world I made this guy, which was a little awkward since I actually didn't film myself making him, but I think I have just enough materials left to make a second one and about five minutes before I have to start the next musical. Today I'm using some thick foam, some skinny foam, a pattern I printed myself, this paint, that paint, some other paint, this pile of tools, a hair dryer, fabric stuffing, and a needle and thread. To make this mask human sized, I used four pieces of printer paper to make the pattern. I didn't actually measure, but it looks big enough. I taped my pattern to the thick foam, used a pen knife to trace it, then cut it out with scissors. If my pen knife were sharp, I could skip the scissors, but then I wouldn't be doing this on the dining room table because I would end up with the outline of this guy's head carved into my table, and that's not my decorating style. I cut out a second face from the thick foam, and then I added this cool notch. I took the mouth from my pattern and used it to cut a mouth out of the notched face. This is also the hole I'm planning to be able to see out. It doesn't exactly reach my eyes, but it's close. I cut out the nose, one cheek, and one eye, so the mouth wouldn't get lonely, I guess? Then I cut one nose, two cheeks, and two eyes out of the thick foam. If you happen to have a cat on hand to supervise, that would be safest. Preferably a cat over 10 pounds. You never know when the foam might decide to attack, but your resident house predator will be able to keep you safe. Why is this guy's nose so big? If you didn't just say, the better to smell you with, my dear, then you aren't me. Now that I've destroyed the pattern entirely by cutting along the crack lines, I'm gonna use what I have left to cut pieces out of the thin foam. I left extra at the bottom for where parts of the pattern are missing, and I just glued a complete layer of skinny foam over the thick foam so that the cracks would stand out. Do you want to give me that, Mr. Moose? So then if you turn this the, and cut that bit, and then I, I sort of just finagled it, and then since it was being difficult, I just cut away the extra bits when I was done. Then I lit a candle and summoned this black cat, who hopefully has the power to slow down time. If you have a hair dryer, it would honestly be safer than this, so I absolutely do not advise that you hold the nose and cheeks over a candle long enough to heat the foam and shape them into shallow bowls. I should buy a hair dryer. I hot glued the nose and cheeks to the front piece of the mask, then cut two long strips of thick foam about as long as my leg and as wide as my foot, which is about the same size as the tip of my nose to the back of my head. Weird. Maybe this cat can slow down time? No? He's wasting it? No! Ah! The most time-consuming part of this costume is gluing those long strips of foam to the front and back pieces of the mask. You have three main goals. One, glue the foam as close to the edges as possible. Two, keep the outside of the mask as smooth as possible without any glue bubbling out. Three, make sure all the pieces of your mask stick to each other and none of them stick to the table, your hands, your headphones, the scissors, or your hair. This is fun. I measured each piece against the mask, cut it, and worked about three inches at a time, letting the hot glue cool completely before I moved on. When I was done, it was this shape. I gave this guy a taste of his own medicine and I chilled him with my icy breath until the mask was completely white. You can use spray paint if you don't have icy breath. Then I painted the mask yellowish. It helps give it that old, worn, cracked, dirty, ice cream man you don't want to meet in the back alley look, which is exactly what we're going for. I painted the edges of the cracks brown and smeared it around with my fingers until both of us looked grungy and grimy. I painted the nose dark blue and the cheeks red. Hey! Killing that ice cream man. Oh, oh no. Well, she was going to live a long and happy life. I need a hat. I mean, it's not for me, but yeah, that'll work. I folded this sheet of skinny foam in half and rounded the folded corners to make an hourglass shape. On a second sheet, I cut two uh, half circles, but make most of the circle parts kind of square. Then I hot glued the hourglass in half using as little glue as possible, waited for it to cool, and turned it inside out. I cut my squarish half circles a little shorter so they wouldn't quite fit around the base of the hat and I painted a thick blue line around the circliest parts of them. A little more hot glue and you have a waterproof version of those little paper hats that old timey grocers wear. I racked my brain for a way to explain this without saying I cut out his tongue, but I cut out his tongue. First from the pattern and then out of the red foam. I left a little extra at the bottom. Wow, what a cool mask, oh boy. <laughs> it's perfect. It's done. I've Very never fun. seen a better ice cream man than this. Okay, Picasso. I glued the tongue to the inside of the mask, glued the eyes above the nose and the hat to the top. All very controversial decisions, considering that's generally how faces look. Lastly, I cut a small square of mostly see-through black cloth and glued it to the inside of the mask all around the outside of the mouth. I really wish I had time to just sit with my new friend, but he still needs a bow tie and an apron. Don't have time to measure, I just cut a rectangle the size of my face and folded it in half like a hot dog. I sewed it into a tube, then sewed both ends shut, cut a couple corners because we're running out of time and turned it inside out. I cut out a much smaller rectangle, made another tube, forgot to catch that cat. Then I turned the tube inside out, sewed up the hole in the bow tie, wrapped the second tube around it as tight as it would go. How much time do I have left? Gotta go faster. Do I have any time left? I cut out a weird curvy polygon using some old apron I had lying around my kitchen as a pattern. Pretty sure I bought this one off a raccoon somewhere. Then I cut three strips, one short, two long, and sewed them in half real quick. Why? Uh, I think it was structural reinforcement. Or just a mood. I sewed the short strap to the top and the long straps to the sides in an apron kind of way. Uh, did I? summon her again? Really shouldn't put that mask on now. She's pretty swipey, but whatever. We're just going to put a little chocolate ice cream up here. Super drippy. Don't know what's up with that. Then we'll just put a bunch of red velvet ice cream here. Delicious. Sophisticated. Not at all scary looking. And a little strawberry ice cream over here. Or a lot. I feel like it's really not said enough that costumes almost always improve by going a little bit bigger than you think is necessary. So here, have a little more. And we're done. 
Never looked better. Wait, hang on. Now we're done. So, now I have two of these. Thank you so much for watching me build him again. If you want to check out how I built other costumes or you just want to see these costumes in action, check out these videos over here. If you want something slightly less creepy to wear, you can check out our brand new merch over there. Try not to spill ice cream on it. Beard salute! Ooh!